Coming up, the mountain lion has big plans to meet public need. Plus, ever thought of fostering an animal? We'll show you how. The news starts now. You're watching NAZ Today, Northern Arizona's local news. Good evening and welcome to NAZ Today. I'm Quana Arnold. And I'm Sheridan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. The Mountain Line is finalizing plans for a new downtown connection center after receiving public comment. NAZ Today's Nick Guerrero joins us with a breakdown of the project. Stretching from Milton Road to Beaver Street, the center will include a new administrative building, outdoor civic space, and 13 bus bays as opposed to the current nine. The goal? Meeting public need. Ridership on the Mountain Line has increased 150% since 2008. Mountain Line says the project is necessary to meet the needs of the growing community. Yeah, we're hoping it benefits transit riders first and foremost. Um, we really want to elevate the transit riding experience. Um, and we hope by making uh, this an attractive place that people want to come ride the bus and use it, that they have the customer service amenities that they really deserve. Oh, it's going to really benefit riders because, you know, first and foremost, they're going to have a place to be sheltered when it's snowing outside, you know, in the winter time. Yeah, so it's going to be uh, really customer service oriented. The plan is focused on improving rider experience. To do this, the mountain line allowed for public comment and made changes like increased event space and abundant outdoor seating. Part of the Connection Center will also be dedicated space for public art. Some of the suggested pieces are crosswalk murals, rotating art in the bus bays, and illuminated glass art. The mountain line says funding for the new center comes from the Federal Transit Administration. They were awarded over $20 million total from both the state and the FTA, one of the largest transit awards in the country. Logistics aside, for some, excitement for the new connection center is growing by the day. You know, this is going to be a facility that you would expect to see in, I think, like bigger cities. So, you know, mountain line has always been very progressive and forward in their movements. So uh, we just can't wait to get it done to serve the Flagstaff community. Plans were just finalized for the new Downtown Connection Center, so there is no date yet for the completion of the project. However, Morley says the anticipated start date for construction is late spring 2022. Nick Guerrero, NAZ Today. Police are looking for three suspects in an early morning robbery at the K Jewelers in Flagstaff Mall. It happened Monday morning. The suspects were caught on security cameras when they broke in and took an unknown amount of jewelry. Detectives are asking for any help identifying the suspects. So if you recognize any of them or have any information regarding the robbery, contact Flagstaff Police or Silent Witness. Flagstaff Unified School District is continuing to require students and staff to wear masks while on school property after a vote by the governing board on Tuesday. FUSD spokesman Joshua Butler says that by enforcing the mask mandate, they are doing their best to keep their students and staff safe while maintaining in-person learning for the school year. A judge ruled just this week that a law banning mask mandates in Arizona is unconstitutional, but FUSD has defied the law since it took effect. As a part of the FUSD's COVID-19 mitigation plan, social distancing is required in the classroom and students are encouraged to wash their hands and use hand sanitizer. Meanwhile, Native Americans for Community Action, or NACA, has awarded NAU grad student Jamie Begay the NACA scholarship. Begay is a graduate research assistant with NAU Center for Health Equity Research, focused on Navajo health issues. That's right. She conducts research to ensure quality health care for Alaskan Natives and Native Americans. Naka says Begay is committed to improving the health of Indigenous people, and she's one of four 2021 Naka scholarship recipients. Another winner will be announced later this evening on Naka's social media. Arizona's recent legalization of sports betting is seeing some early success. On opening weekend, the state already had over 6 million transactions, making it the fourth highest in the country. Arizona also has one of the widest selections of sports to bet on, ranging from football to chess to Call of Duty. Under the new law, so-called proposition bets are not allowed for college games and no bets are allowed at all for high school sports. Well, as we welcome in the beautiful fall weather, you have the opportunity to welcome a new animal companion from the Coconino Humane Association into your home. That's right, and as NAZ Today's Matt Keenitz has more on this week's Pet of the Week. Thanks, Kwana. 
This week we met Oakley, a lovable, playful, energetic dog who would be very thankful this holiday season to find a new home. Oakley is an adventurous four-year-old pit bull terrier mix who's had quite the journey in her short life. She came in from Winslow or around Winslow. I believe it was like the ninth of this month, so we're coming up on about a month she's been here. But Oakley did not come alone. She was pregnant with puppies. She was super pregnant when she first was found and she had a few puppies and when she, those puppies were still with her, she was having a hard time connecting with people. However, those puppies were adopted and now it's Oakley's turn to find her home and she's more than excited. As you guys got to see today, she's very playful and very lighthearted, super fun to be around now. This pup has been through a lot and has not had the easiest journey. But now she wants to find a new best friend to go on all sorts of adventures with. Basically be their sidekick, you know, be their little buddy to go everywhere with because that's what I think she needs is somebody she can just do everything with and somebody who will be active with her. Oakley also comes with a free 30 days of pet health insurance. So that's usually that's a pretty good thing too and I usually like to tell people to continue that insurance because it's Pretty nice. <laughs> Helps a lot. After all Oakley has been through, she is finally ready to find her forever home. Oakley is available to be adopted today for the price of $215, which covers all surgeries and vaccines. If you believe Oakley is a good fit for you and your family, head on down to the Coconino Humane Association today. Matt Keenitz, NAZ Today. The Coconino Humane Society not only takes care of animals and finds them new homes, they also rely on volunteers to provide foster care for injured or young animals that aren't ready to be adopted. And AZ Today's Isabella Padilla joins us with more. Interested in helping out a horse or a pig? How about kittens or an injured dog? If you are foster parent material, the Coconino Humane Association wants to hear from you. The fostering program includes all kinds of animals that end up in the shelter, and you can help. We have you come in and you fill out a foster application form. Um, from there, uh, we have all of your information, all of your vet's information. Um, if you have any other animals, that also goes on to the form as well. We do send home animals with you. We can contact your veterinary or veterinarian and make sure that you know, your animals are up to date on their shots and vaccinations and everything. Giving an animal a temporary home is just one of the benefits of fostering. Hall says when someone fosters an animal, they help them become more comfortable around people, and in some cases, provide a safe, loving place to heal. Again, really great for our recovery patients that, again, need that time in a safe, loving, comfortable environment rather than being here in the kennels where the dogs are barking all the time and they need that time to really relax and recover from whatever surgery they're in. Fostering can also give people an opportunity to see how well they can take care of an animal. Aliyah Prieto and Ethan Figueroa are foster parents. They say it's been helpful in their relationship and they also recommend fostering for those who are uncertain about owning a pet. I think that it developed our relationship to a new level, like with bringing in pets and not only were we able to like help ourselves with our relationship but to help kittens if you're not leaning towards adopting I feel like you should foster to see how you grow towards like having a pet in your space and if you could handle something like that the fostering is a good option if you're not looking for adopting right away. Foster parents also help the Humane Society by providing information about the animal whether it gets along with other pets is good with children or is very active. It's really beneficial for the puppies and the kittens that aren't able to go up yet because one, it does give them that socialization with people and other animals before they are able to go on our adoption floor. For more information on how you can foster a furry pet, visit the Coconino Humane Association website. I'm Isabella Padilla, NAZ Today. Coming up, what lawmakers are doing to prevent a government shutdown and if it happens how could it affect the average American stay with us well it's officially the first week of fall and it's definitely starting to feel like it I'll tell you more on how you can prepare for the upcoming weather changes after the break stay tuned 
when I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Testing. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Today in D.C., a shutdown showdown. Lawmakers continue to battle it out over the best way to prevent a government shutdown, with funding set to expire at the end of the day tomorrow. Britt Conway has a look at what's in the works and how a shutdown could affect the average American. 12.01 a.m. Friday, the federal government is set to run out of funding, risking a shutdown. Senate leaders are trying to expedite the consideration of a bill to keep that from happening. A source who attended a Democratic caucus meeting says a vote could happen as soon as today. The bill would fund the government through December 3rd and include emergency disaster relief funding along with billions for Afghan refugee resettlement, according to a copy of the bill obtained by CNN. We're doing everything we can to avoid a shutdown and we should put something on the floor. We hope our Republican friends will join with us in that. So far, Democrats and Republicans have been split on the best way to proceed. Monday, Senate Republicans blocked a Democratic effort to fund the government and suspend the debt limit, which could mean the country wouldn't be able to pay its bills come mid-October. We will not provide Republican votes for raising the debt limit. So Democrats are pivoting. This latest bill does not include anything about the debt limit. But if lawmakers can't pass this bill or something else to prevent shutdown, there are a number of ways the average American could feel it. All federal agencies would be impacted. Federal business loan and home loan applications could be delayed. Soldiers and civilians who support defense work wouldn't get paid. Neither would more than 50,000 TSA workers. Visitor services at national parks would stop and all Smithsonian museums would close. The countdown is on. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. I'm Rudy Tempesta, I'm 92 years old. I fought in World War II. Then I came home, worked for the post office for 70 years. I've been getting meals on wheels and I enjoy it. 
the most important thing about Meals on Wheels is you meet the people, which to me is fantastic. You need people to keep your brain moving. That's what life is about. It's love and having a conversation with people. So we were walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom packed me turkey and cheese. She's smart. I really like cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day. I really hope I don't have another bad day at school, day at school today. today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to NAZ Today. I am your Wednesday night student forecaster, Lacey Fraun. And this week was our first official week of fall. And those fall temperatures really rolled in, didn't they? I took this video a little bit earlier today, probably around 2 p.m. And that is my favorite tree in front of my yard. It's slowly turning a luscious, beautiful red. And I can't wait to see more fall colors coming up throughout the next month of October into November. But we are still heading into the end of monsoon season, so we're wrapping up with some showers. We'll have a 40% chance of showers through the night and then tomorrow some thunderstorms. So just be careful with the lightning hazards and then also the wind. Wind gusts can be up to 20 miles per hour. So just please be super careful if you're driving, especially out onto the freeways. Here's a look at our current satellite image. And this is really going to show you what the wind is looking like. It's starting down southwest part of Arizona, coming up northeast, pushing into Utah. And as you can see, the entire state of Arizona has some cloud coverage, which meant we got some showers across the state and the state really cooled off today. Our high was around 61. Right now we have cooled down to 54. Our humidity is at 85%, which is fairly high. And then those winds averaging at 10 miles per hour. This was a look at our cloudy sky earlier today. Heading into the uh, daily almanac today, our high was 61. Our low is going to cool off to 39. We're pretty close to those average lows, but a little bit lower than our average highs. Not drastic enough to look like our records. And then we did get a little bit of rain today. So now we are climbing above 19 inches, heading towards 20. I really want to see if we can reach there by the end of our monsoon season heading into the winter. We're definitely above those averages because of those late summer rains we saw in July. Here's a look at our high temperatures across the state for today. As I said earlier, everywhere pretty much cooled off. Hopi and Page at 70 degrees along with Payson. Winslow at 72, Kingman at 77, over in Las Vegas, 83, and then Phoenix, pretty chilly at 87. Tonight, we're going to cool down real chilly to 39 degrees with continuing showers. At this point of the season, we're starting to see some really cold lows. So just please be prepared as we head into the late fall and winter months. Be sure to bundle up, stock up on your winter gear. There's a lot of local organizations that are also accepting donations if you want to donate any winter gear or coats or blankets. Looking at tomorrow, our high is going to be 60. It's going to look a lot like today. We'll see some potential thunderstorms around 40%. And then for you early birds, we will have a beautiful sunrise at 620 AM. Looking at our forecast temperatures for tomorrow, across the board, it's going to look pretty similar than today. Payson's going to be high of 70 along with Winslow low of 52 in Payson and the low 45 in Winslow. Lake Havasu is looking at 92 for the high and then 66 for the low. And then Kingman, a high of 81 and a low of 53. I drove through Kingman a couple days ago. The high was closer to 95, so I wish I could roll through right now. Looking back into Flagstaff for our extended forecast. Isolated showers tomorrow heading into the weekend. Beautiful sunny skies and then back to some showers on Monday. That's all I have for weather tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for Sports with Michael after the break.
Does your family need a break from the daily routine? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. If you or someone you know needs a healthy dose of nature, visit discovertheforest.org and trade in the big screen for the big blue sky by visiting a local park or forest near you. Hiking, picnicking, swimming, orienteering, climbing, admiring wildlife, or inhaling fresh air may result in heightened creativity, feelings of joy, harmony, satisfaction, and a euphoria that can only be explained as oneness with the natural world. Whoa. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 88 children is diagnosed with autism. That's a 1,000% increase in the last 40 years. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing, and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. I just found out my work party is a plus one. You want to go? This is my boss, Ella. Nice to meet you, Greg. <laughs> You're welcome. And welcome back to NAZ Today. I'm your sports reporter, Michael Manny, here to catch you up on all things NAU athletics. Let's get into it. The NAU cross-country team's quest to defend their national championship is off to a good start, with multiple top five finishers in the first two meets. I caught up with the team at the George Kite Classic earlier this month to discuss their mindset this year. Nearly two years has passed since the NAU cross-country team has been able to open their season at home. After last year's spring slate, the men and women's teams took home wins in the return of the George Kite Classic on September 4th. Lumberjacks head coach Michael Smith says he's happy to continue the meets tradition. It's really nice to be back here. It feels like things were back to normal uh, for a day with NAU cross-country in Buffalo Park at the George Kite Classic, so um, it, it meant the world. The men's team is coming off their fourth national championship in five years last season, and the women, their fourth conference title in five years. Despite the recent success, it hasn't changed the way the team prepares. Yeah, it's uh, you know, business as usual for us, uh, covering a lot of the basics. Um, we are, uh, uh, we've got a theme in NAU uh, cross country, which is uh, chop wood, carry water, be really good at the, the monotonous basic things that make us who we are. Having been part of multiple title teams, senior Ryan Roth knows what it will take to repeat. Just gonna take the, the hard work and the consistency and uh, just the, the culture that we created here, the, the, how close we are together. This season, the Lumberjacks know they're the team to beat. As always, NEU cross country has a target on our backs, and so um, we'll know that our competition is going to be coming for us. Jacks on me, Jacks on three! One, two, three, Jacks! Shifting to the court, the NEU volleyball team had a rough non conference slate with three cancellations and losses to ASU, Louisiana State, and Florida State. 
but they turned it around in their first two Big Sky matches late last week, beating the Idaho Vandals and Eastern Washington Eagles in straight sets. A big part of the start has been junior outside hitter Taylor Jacobson, who led both teams in kills for Eastern Washington with 15 and had a career-best 419 hitting percentage. This followed a 13-kill match versus the Vandals two days earlier. For this performance, the Chandler resident was named the Big Sky Offensive Player of the Week for the second time in her career. After last night's win over Southern Utah, the Jacks will travel to Greeley to take on the Northern Colorado Bears this Saturday. Well, that's all we have for sports, but stay tuned for Lacey's weather recap after the break. Live with a human for a while and you get to know a few things. Like, I know she's actually not a morning person. I know she does strange tricks for no treats. I know that water makes her howl like crazy. I even know how the floor stays so clean. She's quick. But the one thing I will never for the life of me know is how she gets so tiny and inside that box. Natalie, how do you get so tiny? Welcome back to NAZ Today. Let's take one last look at weather and oh my goodness, did you guys hear that? I hear some isolated thunderstorms coming through the week, Thursday into the night. We'll have a 40% chance of showers and then Friday it's going to be pretty sunny and then back on Monday we're going to need to gear up and get our umbrellas. That's all I have for you to weather. Back to you on desk. Thanks, Lacey. A dog dying from cancer enjoyed snow for the first time in Utah on Monday. Maggie's owner contacted the staff at the Salt Lake County Ice Center, and they gathered ice shavings in bins and buckets for them. The ice was then placed in Maggie's backyard for her and her family to enjoy. Unfortunately, Maggie has since passed away, but official, officials say she got to enjoy some of her final moments with her family and some snow. Well, Kwana, I think it's really nice that Maggie got to enjoy some snow, her favorite thing. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure to follow us on social media and our YouTube and have a great night.